Brick War Memorial. It has stood here for over 90 years, recording the names of the men who have lost their lives in the Great War. H Temple, G Souter and G Brown. KF Bean, A Bird. But who were these people? Where did they live? Who mourned their loss? Where are they buried? Since May 2013, our team has researched local casualties from the Great War. We have been looking at the memorials in Brigg, Broughton, Scorby and Rawby and finding out everything we can about the men and women on these memorials. Our research has taken us to France and Belgium in search of the graves of the local men. We didn't want any of these brave men and women to be forgotten. Lest we forget. For Brig, one of the worst days of the war was the 13th of October 1915. The first fifth Lynx took part in the Battle of Luz. We are standing on the site of the Hohenzollern Redoubt, which was a German strong point. The Lincolnshire Regiment tried to cross this open ground. By the end, the fifth Lynx had lost several hundred, killed, wounded or missing. in 1913 were one of the most successful and influential families in Brigg. George Senior was a solicitor with his own business. His eldest son, also named George, was a solicitor too, a pensions trustee in Scunthorpe and a lieutenant in the Territorial Army. He and his brother Francis attended the grammar school. They lived here at Arley House, which was built for them and later extended to cope with their eight living children and two servants. George Henry Joseph Souter played the drums in a military band. He became a private in the 1st 5th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment and went on to fight abroad as a captain. On the 13th of October 1915, George went over the top but never returned. He had been killed while attacking the German trenches at the Hohenzollern Redoubt. Unfortunately, 97% of the men who were killed on that day have no grave and so are commemorated on the Lewes Memorial, George being one of these. After George was listed missing in action, his father visited survivors from the 5th Links being treated in Lincoln Hospital. A private Edgar Moulds of Engine Street was able to report that he was wounded and returning to the British lines when he saw Captain Souter lying dead on the battlefield. Souter and Son's solicitors was no more. Two years later a second son, Francis, was killed in the trench raid in France. None of the Souter daughters married. Of six boys, two died in childhood. Two were killed in the war and one emigrated to Argentina. By the time George Senior died in 1923, only Cyril, who survived the war, was left to continue the family name. Arthur Tweed was born in Arkborough, however, by 1911 he was living in Brig with his parents and four siblings. His father was called George Tweed and his mother, Lavina Tweed. They and the family lived on Engine Street. Arthur Tweed had three other siblings, who had died some years previously. His occupation is unknown, but his father worked as a general labourer and his eldest sister, Ethel Louisa, worked as a cook. Arthur Tweed was a Lance Sergeant in the 8th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment. He died on the 26th of October 1915, aged 28. Years after the war, a letter was received from Germany. It contained Arthur's last letter he wrote. This was found and kept by the German soldier who discovered his body. After the war, the letter was returned to his family with a note explaining how it had been found. Henry Dixon Alcock was born in Hull but lived in Cherry Lane, Borough upon Humber, with his father, Henry Alcock, 
who was from Brigg, and his mother, Mary Elizabeth Alcott, who was born in Wotton, and his four brothers and five sisters. He was a cycle worker until he enlisted at Barton upon Humber. Henry Dixon Alcock enlisted in Barton into the 5th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment, ranked as a private. He died in action on the 13th of October 1915 at around 19 years old. He is commemorated here at the Dud Corner Cemetery. Walter Lockwood Hartley was born in Doncaster in 1880. At the age of 21, he was a bank clerk living in Selby. In 1911, he married Mary Yates in Doncaster. Walter Hartley Lockwood enlisted with the 1st 5th Lincolnshire Regiment. Walter was part of the Territorial Army. This was part of the army where you chose if you wanted to fight abroad or stay at home and fight however he chose. He chose to fight abroad. This was to prove fatal. On the 13th of October 1916, Walter was killed in action at the attack on the Holland's Owen Rabout. He was aged 35. We don't know exactly what his link is with Brig, but an obituary refers to his service as a church warden. A memorial said service was held for him in October 1915. John William Leaning was son of Charles Richard Leaning and Sarah Ann Leaning. He also had six other siblings, one brother and five sisters. He was born in 1897 and lived on this street, Silverside, in Brig. John William Leenan enlisted in Brig to the 5th Battalion of the Lincolnshire Regiment. He was a private. On the 13th of October 1915, he was killed in action. He is commemorated here at Dud Corner Cemetery. George Roberts was born in Rawby. His father Frank, his mother Selina and his six sisters lived on Glebe Road in Brig. George Roberts enlisted on the 5th of August 1915 in Scunthorpe and was put into the 1st 5th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment, aged 31. He was shot by an aeroplane but not seriously wounded. He died a couple of months later on the 13th of October 1915 where he was killed in action, aged 34. Joe Walker was born in Brigg, North Lincolnshire in 1888 and later moved to live in Grimsby, North East Lincolnshire. He lived with his mother, Joanna Walker, and father, Frank Hobson Walker. The family had a servant called Ellen Sipling. Joe was a hairdresser gravationist and lived here at 47 Albert Street. Joe Walker enlisted at Lincoln into the 8th Battalion of the Lincolnshire Regiment as a Lance Corporal. Unfortunately, Joe was killed in action on the 26th of September 1915 on the Western Front. He is commemorated here at the Dud Corner Cemetery. James Thomas Devine was born in Brigg in 1889. He was named James after his father, who moved to Brigg from Ireland, but was known to his family as Tom. They lived here at 12 School Court. He was one of 11 children, but only five survived to adulthood. When Tom was aged five, his father died. Without his wage as an agricultural labourer, the family were left in poverty, and the 1901 census records them as being inmates at the Brigg workhouse. When he was old enough, Tom escaped this life by joining the Grenadier Guides. Compared to the workhouse, life in the army must have been a huge improvement. On the 7th of November 1914, he was killed in the desperate fighting to stem the German advance through Belgium. William Holmes was born in Curtin Lindsay, North Lincolnshire in 1886. He lived with his grandmother, Marie Holmes, his father, Charles Holmes, and his younger brother, Charles. His father was a joiner and William was a general labourer. He lived at four commercial buildings, Gainsborough. William Holmes enlisted in Gainsborough as a private in the 2nd Battalion, Lincolnshire Regiment. William was sadly killed in action on the Western Front on the 25th of September, 1915. He was believed to be 26 years old. William is on the Plug Street Memorial in Haynock. Born in 1880, William Henry Cranwell Long was a school attendance officer and husband of Marion Long. Before fighting, going to fight in France, he lived here at 22 Bigby Street in Brig. William Henry Cranwell Long was a Lance Corporal in the 1st Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment. He was killed in action on the 4th of October, aged 37, in France and Flanders. 
Fred Maltby was born in 1899 in Lincoln. However, in 1911, he lived at 16 Rawby Street Brig. His parents were Charles and Edith Maltby, and he had two younger siblings. Charles worked as a harness maker. Fred Maltby was a Royal Field Artillery in which he was a gunner. He fought on the Western Front and was killed in action on the 21st of March 1918. On that morning, the Germans launched a massive offensive that started with a huge bombardment of British artillery. Fred was badly wounded and with his unit in full retreat, they were unable to take him with them. The Neal family originally lived here at 10 Morley's Yard Brig. Joe lived along with his father, Henry Neal, and his mother, E. Neal, formerly Dunderdale. He had one brother and three sisters, as well as three stepbrothers and one stepsister. Joseph Neal was a pupil at Sir John Nelthorpe School and a member of the school football team. After leaving school, he went straight to train as a teacher at the Old National School in Brigg, which is now Brigg Beds. At St Peter's College, where he trained to be a teacher, he was also part of a smokers club. After Joseph's brother died in Gallipoli on the 2nd of December 1915, Joe left teach training and signed up for the army in Sheffield. On the 15th of September 1916, he was killed in the first major attack of the 21st Battalion. He died less than two weeks before his 21st birthday. His mother had already baked a cake to send when she got the news. His body was never identified, so he's commemorated here on the Theatval Memorial. September the 15th, 1916, movements of Joseph Neal in the 21st King's Royal Rifle Corps. At about 4 a.m., they reached the end of communications trench in a wilderness of shell, ho shell holes in Delville Wood. In the moonlight, the whole wood was full of men, all lost. Just as it gets light, the barrage began. There was no time to waste. At about 6 a.m. on a lovely morning, the battalions went over the top. This is a diary of one of the officers. We are in a line of trenches just north of Delville Wood, with the wood behind us and open country rolling in front. On our left is a sunken road leading to Fleurs from Long Farm. The line of advance lies just to the east of Fleurs, practically due north. The 122nd Brigade are on our left, with Fleurs as one of their objectives. Tanks in support for the first time. Our first objective is the Green Line, a few hundred yards in front. We pass straight on the, onto the switch trench, some Germans in trench. Men then press on too keenly and suffer a good many casualties from own barrage. By 10 past eight, four tanks entered Fleurs, followed by the infantry. The village had been cleared by 10 o'clock. However, it was the heavily shelled by the Germans. The 21st Battalion lost 394 men, either killed, wounded or missing. This is a memorial where Joseph Neal and all the other men who died that day are commemorated. Here's Joseph Neal's battalion. Alexander Rogers was born in 1892 in Caister. However, in 1911 he was living in Brig with his mother Emily Rogers. He lived at 34 Albert Street, which is here, and worked as a bank clerk. His mother was retired in 1911, but her former occupation was a hotel worker. His father died some years previously. Alexander Rogers fought with the 12th Battalion Middlesex Regiment and he was a Lance Corporal. He died on the 26th of September 1916 at the age of 24. Frederick Sipling was born in 1880 in Brig, before moving to Skegness when he grew older. He was widowed, however in 1911 he lived with Kate Sarah Rusling, who worked as a servant and Thomas William Beasley who was a boarder. Sipling worked as a gas stoker. Frederick Sipling was a gunner in the Royal Garrison Artillery. He sadly died of wounds in Flanders on the 19th of September 1917. Frederick was 37 when this happened. He now lies here. As time rolls on, the more I miss you. Your sorrowing Kate. Francis Sipling was born in 1892 in Brig. 
He worked as a bottler at a public house and had two younger sisters. His dad, also called Francis, was a brewer's carter. Their address as of 1911 was here at Sergeant Yard on Bridge Street in Brigg. Francis Sipling was from Brigg and was in the 2nd 5th Battalion Lingerie Regiment, ranked as a Lance Corporal. He died on the 11th of April 1917. Here is his name. John William Standerline was born in 1881 in Scorby. He lived with his father William who worked as an agricultural labourer, his mother Anne, his four sisters Georgina, Sarah, Ada and Margaret as well as his brother Joseph. Here, 19 Ending Street, Brigg. His house no longer exists. John Standerline enlisted in Brigham was a private in the 1st Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment. He was killed in action on the 22nd October 1914 in Flanders. Percy Brown Simmons was born in Brigg to Bark and Fanny Simmons. He had two brothers and three sisters and two servants who also lived in the house. Emma Carline, the domestic servant, and Ross Jury. When Percy was older, he made the move to New Zealand. On the 12th of December 1917, before sunrise, he took his horse and wagon to, to Wattle Dump to collect supplies for his regiment. The Germans knew the location of the dump and there was a sudden massive artillery barrage which killed him and three regimental quartermaster sergeants. He was buried here, aged 36. Born in Brigg, 1894, Harold Temple was a clerk and enlisted in his hometown. His father, named William, born in 1853, worked as an assistant in a glass and china shoe shop. And his mother, Martha, was born in 1854. Temple also had one younger sister named Muriel, who was born in 1899. Their addresses, as of 1911, was 18 Glebe Road, Brigg. Harold Temple joined the army to help serve his country. He was a private in the 10th Battalion, Lincolnshire Regiment. He was killed in action at Flanders in France on the 1st of July, 1916, aged just 22. Harold Brown lived here where his parents had a chemist shop. He was an only son and attended Brig Grammar School. When George Harold Brown joined the army, it was natural for him to go into the Royal Army Medical Corp. He worked at the 41st Casualty Clearing Station. At the beginning of June 1917, the clearing station was bombed by German aircrafts and George was hit in the chest by shrapnel. His parents were informed and they were wrote to him. But by the time the letter arrived, he had died. My own dear boy, I hope I find you all now feeling a little better and pray all day long that God will restore you to health and strength and I have the comfortable feel that he will. We are trying, dear boy, not to worry, but the suspense is hard. I only wish I could be near to come and be with you, but I feel sure that you are well cared for. If you would like us to come, will you tell sister? I don't think it will do your father any harm. I believe thinking about you keeps him from thinking too much about himself. Don't worry about your dad. Try and get better yourself, and that will help him more than anything. God bless you, my darling, and restore you to health. With fondest love and kind regards to sister, I am sure she is very kind to you. Mrs. Bell is here now. Annie and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Clay have been, and Mr. Watkinson all, all wish to be remembered to you. Your ever-loving mother. Dear boy, we could not be otherwise than anxious about you, and shall be to have our anxiety allayed that we are hoping that a post or wire may give us the assurance we are looking for. We trust that you will keep a brave heart and look to the bright side. We hope you are not in great pain. With our very best love, your loving father, George Brown. James Patrick Clark was born in June 1897 in Brigg, Lincolnshire. He was one of seven siblings with four sisters, Sarah Elise, Edith and Kathleen Clark, and two brothers, John William Clark and Edward Clark. The Clark family lived here at 28 Bigby Street. His father, Martin Albert Clark, who was a farmer, sadly died at the age of 37 when James was just seven years old. James's mum, Martha Jane Clark, worked as a charwoman before joining the war effort James worked as an apprentice cabinet maker. 
James Patrick Clark joins the 10th Battalion, Grimsby Chums of the Lincolnshire Regiment. Unfortunately, he was killed in action during the first few hours of the Battle of the Somme on the 1st of July 1916. He was only 19 years old when he died. The English mine under the German front line and packed the tunnel full of high explosives. Within seconds, the explosives had been detonated and part of the German front line became non-existent. This is the crater that still stands today as a memorial. It's 300 feet in diameter and 70 feet deep. Killed here was William Coupland, Harold Temple and James Clark. This bench was donated by the residents and regimental associations of Great Grinsby and Lincolnshire in July 1999 to commemorate the actions of the Grinsby Chums on Saturday the 1st of July 1916. Reginald Herbert Westbury signed up underage. He joined the 18th Battalion King's Royal Rifle Corps. However, Reginald was then posted to the 8th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment. He was a second lieutenant and was leading his men when he was killed on the 4th of October 1917 in Brudzane. Although his body was ne not recovered, his personal possessions were returned to his next of kin. Here, you can see his name on the memorial. Scorby, home to 18 of the men who fell. A memorial for them is inside the church. These are their stories. Francis was born in Scorby, North Lincolnshire. He lived there with his father, Arthur Ingram, his mother, Mary Ingram, and his younger brother and sister, Arthur and Gertrude. His father was a bricklayer and Francis was a gardener. His mother was born in Dunpace, Stirling, Scotland, and his, ha his father in Scorby. He was born in 1897. Francis John Charles Ingram enlisted as a gunner in the Royal Garrison Artillery, 49th Siege Battery, when he was 19. Francis was sadly killed in action on the Western Front on the 9th of April 1918, aged 21. He is commemorated here on the Plurk Street Memorial in Haynut, Belgium. Harold Oglesby was born in Scarby in 1895. He lived here with his parents, John and Edith, as well as his sister, Horrence, and his brother, Wilfred. His father was a grocer, and all of his family helped the business, which is now RG Stars. Harold Oglesby enlisted in Wakefield, a city 12 miles south of Leeds. He was a Lance Corporal in the 2nd Battalion of the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry. On the 18th of October 1914, he was killed in action. He is now commemorated at the Le Touré Memorial. Kitchen Reader was born in 1883, Scorby. He lived in Scorby with his parents and spouse, Blanche Reader. His father, Jonathan, was an estate labourer and he followed in his father's footsteps as a market gardener here at Scorby Hall. Kitchen Reader enlisted in Scunthorpe and was a private in the Royal Fusiliers for the City of London Regiment, 26th Battalion. He was formerly in the Lincolnshire Regiment. He was killed in action 2nd of April 1918 in Flanders. John Brazy Sheriff was born the only child of pork butcher and occasional market gardener Charles Frederick Sheriff in December 1895. His mother Mary Ann, one year junior to her father, had been married to her husband for 28 years at the time of John's death. John worked for his father at the butchers, and if his life hadn't been cut short, it is likely he would have taken over the business. They lived here in Scarby on 50 Messingham Lane. He was engaged to Dorothy Hobb, who people in the village stated at the time was distraught at the death of her fiancé. She later inherited the house after she cared for his parents following his death. Finally, she later remarried. Here lies John Brazier Sheriff, Lance Corporal in the 15th Battalion, Sherwood Foresters. 
He was in the Royal Flying Car kite balloon section prior to transferring to the Sherwood Foresters in April 1917. He died on the 14th of October 1918. It is mentioned in the War Diaries. 27 men were also lost. We also believe his family was very religious. This is due to a biblical reference on the gravestone. It cannot be seen at the moment due to mud, but it says he saved others. Reginald Bertram Talbot Cliff was born in Frodingham in Lincolnshire. His family home is Scorby Grove, which is now a children's home in Scorby. He was educated at Uppingham Boarding School. Cliff lived at Thornton Hall in Osby. He was an ironmaster. His parents were Joseph Cliff and Ada E. Cliff. His wife was Mrs. M. Randolph Cliff and he enlisted aged 26. He later died of wounds on the 23rd of September 1915. He was aged 33 and is buried here at Listen Hook Military Cemetery. Charles Taylor was born in Greatcoats, 1895. He lived here on Park Lane, Scorby, with his father Charles and mother Margaret. His father was a market gardener hawker. He had three sisters, Nellie, Lillian and Mary, as well as his brother Alfred. In the 1911 census, he was listed as a horse lad for the Chapel family on Manor Farm in Ashby. Charles Taylor enlisted in Brigham was part of the Lincolnshire Regiment, but was transferred to the South Staffordshire Regiment, 1st Battalion. He was killed in action 8th December 1916 at the age of 22. His body couldn't be re recovered and he is commemorated at the Fiat Vell Memorial. George Thompson, the youngest brother of Arthur Thompson, was born in Scarby Brook on the 1911 census. He was living at home with his family, still in Scarby Brook. He was then 16 years old and working as a farm labourer. George Thompson served as a private in the 8th Battalion Lincoln Regiment. He was killed on the 26th of September 1915 at the age of 20, two years before his brother Arthur lost his life. This plaque commemorates the men and women who lost their lives in the Great War who were from Rawby. It is found here in Rawby Church. Lieutenant W.S. Bean and his brother Lieutenant K.F. Bean. Lieutenant R.T. Hett, Sergeant G. Nelson. Corporal T.M. Scott. Lance Corporal J.T. Elson. Private C.F. Andrew. Gunner A.F. Bachelor. Private F. Cook. Gunner W. Day. Private A. Stevenson and his brother, Private E. Stevenson, Private W. Vesey, Private W. E. Wilson, and Sister Ellen Andrew. To the glory of God and the loving memory of William Stuart Bean, Lieutenant R. E. and Royal Flying Corps, killed in action in Mesopotamia, January 21st, 1918, aged 25 years. And of Kenneth Foster Bean, Lieutenant, 2nd 7th Battalion, the Royal Scots. Killed in action in France, April 11th, 1918, aged 20 years. The eldest and third sons of William Ashby and Mary Elizabeth Bean of this parish. Charles Frederick Andrew was born in 1893 in Rabi, where we also lived in 1911. He worked as an engine cleaner at a railway, and his dad, also named Charles, worked as a plate player. His mother, Charlotte, and sister Bertha also lived at the address. He served in the 8th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment as a private. He was 23 when he died in France. Charles Andrew served in the 8th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment as a private. He was 23 when he died in Flanders on the 26th of September 1915. He was killed in action. Here, you can see his name on the memorial. Kenneth Foster Bean was son of William Ashby Bean and Mary Elizabeth Bean, who owned the Sutton Bean Brewery in Brig. 
Kenneth was born in Warby and lived here as well as his two other brothers who also went to war, William Stuart Bean and Noel Bean. All brothers went to Brig Grammar School. Kenneth then went to boarding school in Witherby, Yorkshire and William went to Ripon as a brewer's pupil to follow in his father's footsteps. All three brothers joined the war effort. Kenneth Foster Bean and his brothers William Stuart Bean and Noel Bean all went to serve their country in World War I. William Stuart Bean was a lieutenant in the Royal Flying Corps but was sadly killed in action. His body lies in Baghdad's war cemetery in Iraq. Whereas his younger brother, Kenneth Foster Bean, was a lieutenant in the Royal Scots 7th Battalion. He served his country until his death on the 12th of April because of his wounds. His body lies here. The both brothers were killed within three months of each other and the middle brother, Noel, was seriously injured in between the brothers' deaths. John Draper was born in 1894 in Rawby, but lived on Drake Street in Gainsborough. He worked as an iron turner supporting his two younger siblings, Percy James and Henry. His parents were Thomas Sidmonds and Annie Draper. John Draper fought with the 5th Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment as a corporal and was 22 when he died fighting on the 13th of October 1915. John Thomas Elsom, the son of the late Thomas and Elizabeth Elsom, was born in 1892. He lived on Melton Road with his two sisters, Ethel and Mabel. John Thomas Elsom enlisted with the 1st 5th Lincolnshire Regiment at Brigg. On the 13th of October 1915, the 1st 5th Regiment went over the top for the very first time. Lance Corporal Elsom was killed in action at the age of 23. The Hohenzollern Rabout attack was a huge failure that day. Out of 620 men who were attacked, 483 were either killed or wounded. John Thomas Elsom is now commemorated on the Lewes Memorial. Roland Forston Het was son of Henry Metcalf Het, a solicitor, and his mother was Mary Zelma Het. He was born in Brigg, but lived here at Redhome in Warby, which is now Warby Hall Care Home. He lived here with his parents, sister Audrey Mabel Het, and their three servants. Roland went to a boarding school called St Edward's in Oxford before he went to join the men at war. Roland Het joined the army and he was a lieutenant in the service corps attached to the 2nd Battalion, Lincolnshire Regiment. Roland Het was wounded in the leg. After being dressed, he was being carried back by stretcher when a shell burst and killed him and two of the four stretcher bearers. His death was on the 26th of, o of October 1916 at the age of 20. He's here on the Fleet Valley Memorial in the Somme. George Nelson was born in 1895 in Rawby. He was son to Edmund Nelson and Mary Ann Nelson. He also had two brothers, Frederick and Edmund. Before enlisting, George worked on his father's farm. George Nelson was a sergeant in the 6th Battalion, Lincolnshire Regiment. He was believed to be fighting in Flanders on the 22nd of August 1917 when he was killed in action, aged 23. William Vesey was born in Twigmore in 1893 to Edward and Arabella Vesey. They lived at 123 Railway Street with his brothers George and John. When he was 16 he had moved and was living at Red Farm with Henry Redshaw Skinner and family, for whom he worked on the farm. William Vesey enlisted to the army in Brigg and he served with the 1st Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment as a private. He sadly died on the 21st of March 1918. Ellen Andrews, our area's only female fatality, was born in 1886 to Frederick and Hannah Andrews. She moved to Rawby and lived here at Glebe Farm. In March 1917, Ellen applied to join the Territorial Force Nursing Service and she served overseas. Ellen had served in France nearly a year when the following was recorded by the matron in chief. Number 58, Casualty Clearing Station, Niels. 21st of March 1918, railway close to Casualty Clearing Station bombed. Four sisters were turning to their billets when a bomb fell near and killed one and ki wounded another. 
One of the remaining sisters stayed down the railway while the other ran for help. Casualties Killed Sister E. Andrew, Territorial Force Nursing Service at 58 Casualty Claiming Station on 21st of the 3rd, 1918, by a bomb. As recognition for her death in the service, Ellen Andrews was posthumously awarded £38, 13 shilling and 5 pence, just over six months' salary. The record shows that she joined the Territorial Force Nursing Service on the August 26, 1914, three weeks after Britain had entered the war and had served for over four years before her death. George Burgess is commemorated here on the Broughton Memorial. However, he enlisted for the Scottish Seaforth Highlanders and it is still unknown as to why he is here on the Broughton Memorial. George Burgess enlisted in Beverly, Yorkshire and became Lance Corporal George Burgess with the 8th Battalion Seaforth Highlanders in Scotland. On the 25th of September 1915, George was killed and is now commemorated on the Lewes Memorial and you can see his name here. William Clough Tyson was born in 1898 in Bombay, Lincolnshire. He had four brothers, Edward, Harry and Walter Tyson. William's dad, James C. Tyson, was a shepherd on a farm. While William and brother Edward were farm labourers, although William was born in Mom Bombay, he lived with his family in Goatquell, Broughton. William Clough Tyson enlisted in the Lincolnshire and joined the 4th Battalion of Princes Wales, North Staffordshire Regiment. Private William died of wounds at the age of 20 on the 20th of October 1918 in Flanders. His younger brother, Harry Tyson, died just five days earlier and lies here. Private Harry Tyson belonged to the 4th Battalion, Prince of Wales Regiment, otherwise known as the North Staffordshire Regiment. He died of wounds just five days before his older brother, William Tyson, on the 15th of October 1918 at the age of 18. George Marsden Popple was the son of James and his wife Mary Elizabeth Popple, who was born on December 12, 1894. The youngest of four children, he took residence here at Castlethorpe Hall, just outside Brig. George Popple attended Uppingham Boarding School from September 1909 to December 1912. On Christmas Eve 1915, Private Popple received his commission into the Territorial 15th Battalion, Northumberland Fusiliers. However, prior to the Battle of the Somme, Popple and a few fellow officers were attached to the 16th Battalion. George Marsden Popple was killed on the 26th of June 1916 after inspecting the trenches on an instructional tour at Thiepval Wood, just over there. The passage describing this in the battalion history says, on the 26th, the company commanders were instructed to conduct these officers around the line in order they might see the position whence we were to make our attack. Our artillery had started the bombardment and the officers had anything but a pleasant journey. Captain Douglinson and his party had a particularly bad time and on leaving the trenches a shell burst right in the middle of them and killed 2nd Lieutenants Popple and Wickham. Captain Douglinson and 2nd Lieutenant Thornycroft were wounded. Lieutenant Thornycroft su survived but it was but was seriously wounded as a result of shrapnel shells. These sh shells contained lead. The British, German and French used lead shrapnel shells, so we are unsure whether Popple and his fellow officers were killed by friendly fire. It was only days before the infamous Battle of the Somme. Just five days later, Captain Frederick Huskinson, formerly the art teacher at Brig Grammar School, also died. George Marsden Popple's remains lie here at O'Toole Military Ce Cemetery. He was only 21. John Johnson was the son of Henry and Ruth Johnson, who lived at 66 Dunstall Street, Broughton. John was born in Broughton and enlisted for the war in Scunthorpe. John Johnson was a private in the 2nd Battalion and part of the Lancashire Fusiliers. He died on the 12th of October 1916. He was only 18 years old.
George William Chafer enlisted in Scunthorpe to the 12th Battalion of the Norfolk Regiment. He was a private and was killed in action on the 11th of September 1918 in Flanders. George is commemorated here on the Plurgstra Memorial. And this is his brother, Herbert Chafer, who signed up in Lincoln to the 1st Battalion Lincolnshire Regiment as a sergeant. He died on the 27th of October 1914 in action at Flanders. Charles Hogg was born in 1895 in Broughton. He lived here on Broughton High Street, which was formerly Old Street. He was son to Charles Burkett Hogg and Anne Hogg. He had two brothers, James, who also fought in the Lincolnshire Regiment, and Cyril, as well as four sisters, Kathleen, Gwendolyn, Nancy and Amy. Before enlisting in Grimsby, he worked as a blacksmith striker. Charles Hogg was a private in the 5th Lincolnshire Regiment who were involved in the Hohenzollern attack on the 13th of October 1915. This is when Charles was killed in action. He was aged 21. He's commemorated on the Lewes Memorial. Charles Howarth was born in 1892 in Broughton. He spent his life living in Broughton before enlisting in Grimsby. He was son of Elizabeth Jane Howarth. Charles Howarth was a private in the 1st 5th Battalion at Lincolnshire Regiment. On the 13th of October 1915, the battalion were involved in the Hohenzollern attack in France. Charles Howarth was killed in action, aged 23. He is commemorated on the Lewes Memorial. Edwin Fitteroy was a Lance Corporal when he was killed in action on the 1st of November 1914, the same day as Fred Hare. His brother, Frederick Pitteray, was only 18 when he was also killed in action on the 16th of June, 1915, seven months after his brother. Sydney Goats was the younger child of John and Sarah Goats of Mill Place, now on the site of Artis Mill Lodge. Goats went to Brig Grammar School, which is now Sir John Norfolk School. In the school magazine, there was pages of cricket match reports. It said the first 11, captained by S. Goats, he was a sound bat, rather unlucky, a very useful stumper, excellent fielder, keen hard working captain. He was also a prefect of the borders and the captain of the football team. In his speech in November 1914, he was commended for good conduct and good work at the school and on the sports field. He enlisted into the 14th London Regiment, the London Scottish, which were part of the 168th Brigade, 56th, 1st London Division. The division was formed in February 1916 and in May moved to the front opposite the fortified village of Gomcar at the northern end of the Somme Front. The 56th Division and the 48th South Midland Division were to attack this village as a diversion to the main attack at the opening of the Battle of the Somme on the July 1st, 1916. The London Scottish were on the right flank battalion in the attack. Some 241 men of the London Scottish were killed on that day or died of wounds.
did we lie because we did not choose? To live and shame the land from which we sprung. Life to be sure is nothing much to lose. But young men think it is, and we were young. They shall not grow old. As we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them. Nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun. And in the morning. We will remember them.